this video, we're going to delve into six creepy true episodes that will make you think twice before booking your next Airbnb. Let's begin. During my recent holiday, I stayed in a tiny, two-bedroom Airbnb. This location was on the route to another Airbnb where I planned to spend the majority of my trip, but it was more of a stopover for the night. When I arrived, the property was clean and unoccupied, just as I had expected. I wandered around the entire house before bringing in my luggage and sitting on the couch. It was probably around 8 p.m. I was nodding off when the doorbell rang, jolting me awake. I was perplexed and frightened when I looked over at the front entrance. I was a young girl, so it's safe to assume I'm easily afraid and dislike talking to strangers, especially at night when I'm alone. I stood up and walked over to the door, hearing two males on the other side whispering to each other. Because there was no safety lock or anything, I just kept the door locked and shouted out to them. Hello? We've come for the Airbnb. Can you help me open the door? A man exclaimed. I asked them loudly what they meant, not knowing what being here at the Airbnb meant. He replied that he had reserved the room for the night. I knew there had to be an error, so I told him, still yelling through the door, that I had it reserved as well and that he should call the owner. That didn't make the man happy. Although, if I were in his shoes, I'd be furious as well. I heard one set of footsteps go away from the door while the other man requested if I could open it so we could talk about it. I was about to give in, putting my hand on the doorknob since he appeared credible, but something told me to simply play it safe. I stated my husband will be there in a few minutes to work it out. I didn't want them to think I was alone, so I hoped it would catch him off guard if anything went wrong. However, the man did not answer. I waited another minute because I hadn't heard any footsteps leave before moving the short curtain to the side and looking out the small window. The man I'd apparently been speaking with was facing his car, which was parked in the driveway, and behind him was one of the most horrifying things I'd ever seen. A group of around five persons stood further down the driveway, almost hidden, as if waiting for a signal. They were all wearing some sort of mask, and I couldn't see what was on the other side of the door, but I thought there were even more people over there. I was terrified since I knew this was most likely a gang because of where I was staying. I backed away from the door, panicking and attempting not to hyperventilate. I ran to my bedroom to retrieve my phone and contact the cops, and I could hear more footsteps all over the house. It felt like I was encircled by wolves that could crush the windows and break in at any moment. Trying to stay calm, I took my phone into the bathroom and dialed 911. The operator also advised me to be quiet and calm because they were sending a group my way and would be there in a matter of minutes. I stay on the line, still hearing footsteps outside the building, until the horrifying sound of bending and snapping would came from the front door. I was sobbing uncontrollably now, attempting to cover my lips with my palm. I watched as a swarm of individuals hurried inside, unlocking doors and cabinets until one reached the bathroom door and tried the handle. Here, he yelled before walking away. The group kept plundering the residents until they heard sirens in the distance and began to scatter. They all fled by the time the cops arrived and all of my belongings had vanished. My car's windows were damaged and it was looted as well. One of the officers came down with me to go over some specifics and he told me that they've recently had problems with huge groups or gangs breaking into homes. They believe the main purpose is not to harm the citizens, but rather to deprive them of everything. 
That's why they probably left me alone in the bathroom, knowing I wasn't a threat. It was horrifying whether their intentions were to hurt me or not. I know it had little to do with my staying at the Airbnb that night, but it still makes me nervous every time I stay at one today. Are you brave enough to step through the threshold? Keep watching and discover the unspeakable horrors that lie behind the sinister doorway. It was the end of April and I was preparing to relocate from Chicago to Nevada. I hired a company to transport all of my boxes to the new house. To make things easy on myself, I planned to take a road trip down there, staying at hotels or errands along the way and relaxing for a few days. The whole journey time would be about 30 hours, so I divided it in thirds and decided to drive 10 hours every day and stay somewhere overnight. After calculating the timing, I determined that my first stay would have to be on the outskirts of Nebraska. I searched through Airbnb looking for something cheap because there wasn't much to do in Nebraska and I really just needed a somewhere to stay for eight hours before heading back out. On the road, I discovered a two bedroom, one story house. Although I didn't require two bedrooms, the price was so low that I didn't mind the extra space. However, I found it odd that they only displayed photographs of one bedroom again, but it didn't make much of a difference to me, so I booked it for the next night and went to bed. I completed packed my car with the rest of my belongings in the morning and began the drive. I departed a little later than I had planned, but I assumed it wouldn't be too bad if I had to travel in the dark for a few hours. If you've ever traveled through Nebraska, you know how flat it is. There are vast areas hundreds of miles long with no buildings at all. I arrived at the Airbnb a few hours after dark. It was at the end of the long, barren road I'd been on, as well as along a small dirt walk. I was initially disappointed because it appeared to be much more worn down on the outside than in the photographs. I persuaded myself that I was just there for a few hours to sleep, so it didn't really matter. I gathered my belongings and proceeded to the front door. The owners usually leave the key in a key box and give you the password, but this door didn't have a key box. In reality, there was no lock at all. It was one of those simple doorknobs you'd find on a closet door. I began to feel apprehensive, but I didn't really have any other choice except to stay here. I unlocked the door and stepped inside, and to my surprise, it was quite nice. It was small on the inside, but the living room and kitchen were tastefully furnished and appeared to be well maintained. I stepped inside the first bedroom, but it too lacked a lock. Fortunately, the second bedroom did, so I chose to unpack there. But there was one thing about this bedroom that really freaked me off. A small antique doorway maybe three feet tall and two feet wide, stood just in front of the bed on the wall. The more I gazed at this door, the more uneasy I became. But there was no way I was going to stay in a room I couldn't lock. I attempted to open it to see what was behind it, but it was locked from the inside. I imagine the owner probably only stored cleaning supplies or extra towels back there, but the store gave me the chills. But I was feeling weary, so I simply unpacked what I needed for the night and began to prepare for bed. I awoke in the middle of the night to a faint tapping noise coming from the bed's edge. With the exception of the tapping, the entire house was silent. I went for my phone on the nightstand as quickly as I could and turned on the flashlight. The tapping ceased as I directed the light to the edge of the bed. I'm not the type to get afraid easily. I can be freaked out or nervous, but I'm never scared. 
but something about the small opening on the side of my bed terrified me at the time. I sprang out of bed, turned on the lights, and grabbed everything I could find. I dashed out the door as quickly as I could. I couldn't see much outside because it was still dark, but as I was backing my cart out of the gravel way, I swear I noticed a man lying on the ground behind the house. I drove for about 30 minutes down the road before pulling over and messaging the owner to inform him that there might be someone in his house and to call the police. I drove for a few hours until I came to a little town and parked in a grocery store parking lot to catch some sleep. I'm still not sure what happened at that Airbnb, but the creepiest thing was when I checked my phone in the morning and found that my message had been read just a few minutes after I sent it, but the owner never answered. Don't look away now. Stay tuned as we reveal the chilling tale of the uninvited visitor. Can you handle the fear? Last year, I went to Salt Lake City by myself. I'd never had the opportunity to take many vacations previously, and when I did, it was always with my family. This was the first time I'd be able to spend time somewhere else entirely by myself. I know it seems strange, but I don't mind being alone, especially since I never have the opportunity to be alone. I looked up hotels and Airbnb in the vicinity and the Airbnb were shockingly nicer and less priced. However, all of the cheaper ones were a little further out of town, but I was driving my own car. As I didn't mind having to travel a short distance to the city, I chose a comfortably sized air. It was modest, but the kitchen and bedroom were nice, and that was all that mattered to me. I arrived at 6 a.m. on Sunday. I brought all of my belongings inside when the owner sent me the password. It was far nicer than the little apartment I lived with my roommate. I hopped on the couch and turned on the TV once I had everything inside and set up. I was looking forward to relaxing for the night and appreciating the solitude after a 10 hour travel. I fell asleep immediately, but it was approximately 7 a.m. So my body awoke me a few hours later. The clock had just passed 10 o'clock and the television was still on. I took the remote and switched it off before getting up to get a glass of water before retiring to bed. A strong cold breeze brushed against my tired eyes as I strolled from the living room to the kitchen. When I looked to my right, I noticed the front door was completely open. My eyes widened and my heart pumped. I took a moment to look at the entrance, then around the room. This was truly worrying me up because I knew I had closed and locked it. I stepped over to the door and quietly shut it, listening for any noises of someone inside. For perspective, I'm not the biggest person in the world, but I'm quite tall and in shape, so I felt confident that unless an intruder had a gun, I could push them out. I took a kitchen knife and moved from room to room, inspecting every inch of the house. Nobody was present. This further added to my confusion, so I texted the homeowner, asking whether anyone was supposed to come over tonight and describing what had transpired. But it was late, so I didn't expect an immediate response. I went around the room, locking each door. Then I swiftly double-checked the house. While I was more alert than before, I was still exhausted. I went to bed and promptly fell asleep. But when I awoke, I was much less tranquil than before. Something came from outside. Outside my bedroom door, not outside the home. I didn't know what to do and just stood there waiting for whoever was outside the room to act first. As I sat in bed, 
I considered how the intruder may have gotten in. The homeowner would be the only one who knew the passcode to the door. So, in that moment, I was certain it was him. This gave me more bravery because I assumed it was some creepy person who liked to snoop on people who stay at his Airbnb. I jumped out of bed, having not heard anything else, and grabbed my phone from the nightstand to contact the cops. However, I must have made too much noise because almost immediately, someone began sprinting away from the door and toward the front of the house. Knowing the burglar was standing right next to the bedroom door the entire time worried me even more and I contacted 911. But nothing more happened in the time it took the officers to arrive. The individual had departed. I booked a hotel to stay in for the rest of my vacation, but the owner of the Airbnb granted me a refund because he could establish it wasn't him. He was concerned, had learned about it, and was a genuinely kind old man. It was frightening enough I assumed it was the owner, but knowing it was just some random guy makes it even creepier. I'm not sure how he got in or why he was stalking me, but just thinking about it gives me shivers. The part that I remember the most is waking up to see the front door unlocked. Now that I know someone was in the house, that implies whoever it was walked in and observed me asleep on the couch, then went on to do whatever they came there to do. It's just frightening and unsettling, and it makes me never want to stay at an Airbnb alone again. Are you prepared for a spine-chilling rendezvous? Continue watching to experience the creepy encounter that will leave you shivering with dread. This occurred a few years back after my buddies and I had completed our second year of college. Finally, I'm finished with school for a few months. We plan to have a small celebration to kick off the summer vacation. We all worked part-time jobs near university and saved money. We decided to go big and spend a few days in Las Vegas where none of us had ever been. We started by looking through hotels in the city to locate somewhere affordable, but still large enough for the four of us. We eventually gave up and began looking at Airbnb, which were generally cheaper and larger. We discovered a few decent ones, but settled for the largest with the most rooms. Fast forward a few weeks when she picked us up at the airport and dropped us off at the house. It appeared even bigger in person and we were all looking forward to spending the following few days here. We all unpacked and relaxed for a couple of hours because we were exhausted from the travel. A few hours after the sun had set, my friend Alyssa and I were the only ones who remained awake. It wasn't too late, around 9 p.m., but the other two had elected to sleep in. With nothing else to do, Alyssa suggested going for a walk outside and exploring the area. I agreed, eager to visit the one-of-a-kind houses. I should say that our Airbnb was a really wonderful house, as were the nearby houses. We didn't think twice about going for a walkabout because it wasn't a dangerous street or anything. We stepped outside and began walking down the street. The street took a sharp curve after passing six or seven residences and connected to another crossing road with homes on the side. It seemed unusual because these houses looked nothing like the ones we had just passed on our block. These were basically rundown shacks and I don't want to be disrespectful. It was simply strange to see such a drastic contrast in housing. We carried on after barely turning the corner, observing shattered windows, missing mailboxes, and even worn out unoccupied signs on several of the doors. 
One of the houses even had a ripped and stained sofa chair in the midst of their front yard. We agreed to take the next right towards our Airbnb and return, but a few minutes later, we observed a small SUV approaching us from down the road with its headlights turned off. As it got closer, it slowed down and eventually came to a stop right next to us. An older woman, perhaps in her 50s, rolled down the window and remarked, you two are such a cute couple with a big smile. She was making really bizarre, jerky gestures with her head in her arms and was just acting really crazy. I replied, thank you, hoping to fast conclude the conversation and persuade her to leave. Fortunately, it worked. She proceeded down the road and we followed in the opposite direction and after a few minutes, we found the next turn and returned to the street of our Airbnb. We were both shocked and creeped out by the whole thing and we just wanted to get inside and forget about it. But as we approached the driveway, we noticed the old lady's SUV turn down our road and begin heading back towards us. We were halfway there when she stopped just in front of the home, but this time she simply stared at us. She didn't say anything. She was just staring. Alyssa dashed inside and I immediately followed hearing the car drive away as I closed the door behind us. We sat up a little longer, locking all the doors and checking the windows to make sure she had gone. We agreed after an hour that we were probably okay, so we went to our rooms and got ready for bed. The next day, we told our other friends what had happened and they were also pretty creeped out. We ended up telling the owner of the Airbnb about the whole situation and we even asked if we could cancel our third day so we could leave early, which he thankfully agreed to. We decided to spend the rest of the day away from the home, hanging out in the city to attempt to enjoy at least one of our days in Vegas and we ended up having a lot of fun, but as the night approached, we were ready to call an Uber and head back to the house. During the journey back, I received a text from the owner asking, is she the lady from the night before with a photograph attached? I opened it and I saw a screenshot of the lady standing outside the house from the ringing doorbell footage. I instantly responded to the owner and showed all of my friends. We didn't know what to do, so we asked the driver to drop us off at a hotel parking lot just a few blocks away while the owner phoned the cops. After approximately 45 minutes, the owner called to say the house was clear and we could return, but he also stated that the police had not discovered the lady. This definitely did not make any of us feel any better. We arrived at the house and immediately began packing all of our belongings so that we could depart first thing in the morning. Nothing happened overnight, tea or the next morning, but I can assure you that none of us slept well. We left as quickly as we could and headed for the airport. This was undoubtedly one of the oddest things that had ever happened to me and I still think about it frequently. My only piece of advice is to always verify the area around your Airbnb before booking it. I'm not sure what she wanted or why she was following us, but it makes me nervous to think of what would have occurred if the owner hadn't had a doorbell camera or if we had stayed longer. Can you handle the terror of a deranged neighbor? Keep your eyes peeled and your heart pounding as we delve into the bone-chilling story of the unhinged neighbor. My partner and I were spending a few days in Michigan visiting my parents and we didn't want to stay with them for obvious reasons. We eventually found an Airbnb around 15 minutes away from their home. A charming one-bedroom unit. The interior was totally refurbished and quite modern, so it wasn't the most affordable. 
The host appeared to be friendly and had high ratings, but there were a few remarks that raised some red flags. The majority of the negative comments highlighted unusual interactions with the neighbor. I've had some on neighbors, so I'm not one to pass judgment. I simply mentioned it to the host prior to booking and she claimed that her neighbor is nosy and that when people try to enter the Airbnb, she becomes defensive. But she says she'll inform the neighbor about her presence, so everything should be good. Everything went smoothly the day we arrived. We met the host who lived nearby and she handed us the key to the front door as well as the code to the apartment itself. We unpacked everything and then went to my folks house for dinner. To deal with my mother, I drank a few beers throughout the night and before we realized it, it was 10 PM. It's time to return to the Airbnb. We arrived at our rental. Each building now comprises four apartments, two on the ground floor and two on the upper level. And the one where we were staying was on the upper left. When we pulled up, we noticed a small figure standing in between some curtains in the top right window of the flat. I felt strange right away. Who just stands there staring out the window? My boyfriend parked and as I got out, I looked up to see if she was still there watching us as we moved towards the front door. Her features were obscured to me. You know how some folks just have a strange expression on their face? Her tangled brown hair and large open eyes were like this. She had to be in her 60s or 70s and she was wearing a frown. I've never seen somebody so enraged. My guy unlocks the door and we enter. Not surprisingly, she is standing at the top of the steps. She says nothing and simply stands there staring at us. She's petite and round, but the way she stood revealed that her arms and legs were incredibly thin. My partner and I exchanged a brief glance before starting up the stairs. We approached while she glared us down, but to my surprise, she said nothing. She only stared at us with her eerie eyes. As my boyfriend entered the code and we rushed into the apartment, I kept looking back. What in the world was that? My lover stated it softly, his face puzzled. I shook my head, relieved that she didn't try to talk to us. Nothing out of the ordinary happened for the rest of the night until we heard a banging on the front door. I jumped out of bed to see my partner already awake. The banging continued for perhaps a minute or two before suddenly ceasing. When I checked my phone, it was nearly 4 AM. Who is pounding on the door at this hour? My partner approached the door, whispering to me that he was going to check the peephole to see who was there. I followed him slowly as he inspected. He returned my stare, evidently perplexed. I heard him gasp as he opened the door slightly to peek around. I approached him gently and whispered, what? Three dead rats were on the welcome mat outside the door. They appeared to be utterly destroyed with only one of them still attached to the skull. He shut the door and we decided to call the host later that day. I tried to sleep, but the pictures of those rats kept playing back in my head. I checked my phone after a bit and saw that it was 6.30 AM. Accepting that I wouldn't be able to sleep, I got up to prepare coffee when I heard the neighbor's door slam shut. I peered out the kitchen window, which overlooked the parking lot, hoping to see the insane lady. And there she stood, staring at our parked car without even looking inside. She was just staring at it. She had been staring at our car for a long time, 
before slowly turning her head to look at me. I took a step back and heard her shriek, this horrific, blood-curdling shriek, as if she was being attacked. My boyfriend bolted from the room, apparently terrified, and we both glanced out the window once again. The neighbor was holding her head and yelling at the driver's side window. She grabbed the top of the car and began bashing it forward, shouting as if they had never left. Where are they going to leave? And why are they still coming? I began documenting for insurance considerations. My boyfriend then contacted the cops and the host. By the time the cops arrived, she was lying on the ground next to our car, which had surprisingly little damage, given what we had just witnessed. The host apologized warmly, stated this had never happened before, and refunded our entire trip. We saw the lady being led away in handcuffs, albeit it took her some time to cooperate. We never found out what was wrong with her, but my hypothesis is that something snapped, and we just happened to be there when it did. But I do know that when reserving an Airbnb, you should evaluate every review. Every single one of them. Prepared for a night of darkness and fear. Stay with us as we uncover the harrowing tale of the night the water stopped working. Will you survive the terror? For several years, I ran an Airbnb property. I gave up due to the burden of keeping up with it while also working full time. The advantage of using Airbnb instead of renting out your home as you typically would is that you have the opportunity to earn significantly more money if your home is frequently rented. Because we were staying in a relatively high traffic area for holidays, Airbnb was an excellent choice for us. My wife and I were excited at first, but as more people reserved the house, it became more difficult. We needed to stay on schedule and employ cleaning services after the first customers left and before the following ones arrived, as well as respond to their messages and emails on time. But everything was well for a few years before we had what we thought was a young couple staying at the house. I emailed them the door unlock code just like every other time. I practically never interact with the customers. I sat back and relaxed for the rest of my day off when they informed me that they were inside and that everything was fine. I should also remark that I rarely spoke with the customers beyond a couple texts. They normally text me when they arrive and when they depart and they occasionally ask a question about the house, but that's about it. But as 9 p.m. rolled around and I was getting ready for bed, I received a text message from the young man who was staying at the residence. It was brief, saying he'd contact me in a minute. He then called a minute later. I got a horrible feeling when I saw the text, but what he stated shocked me. He stated that the water in the house was not working. Of course, I apologized, but I had no idea how it was possible. But staying in a house without running water is unthinkable, so I knew I had to get it fixed right away. I asked if I could come check it out quickly so that someone could come in the morning to fix it. He consented, remaining nice throughout, and I drove over there a few minutes later. As I approached the driveway, I observed two cars. This wasn't necessarily a red sign at the moment, but it was an odd thing I noted because they were presumably a young couple on a single night's vacation. So I was perplexed. Why they would rent two separate cars? I assumed they were being visited, which is not permitted. But it didn't bother me too much. I approached the front door and knocked before entering the code and entering the building. It was quite silent. I expected them to be waiting for me, but they weren't to be found. 
I should have glanced around first, but I was exhausted and simply wanted to get everything over with. The main water valve was the first thing I wanted to examine to make sure there wasn't a leak or a flood. So I went downstairs and over to the valve. There was no evidence of water or damage anywhere. I was perplexed, but then I fiddled with the valve and heard the water start rushing again. I switched it back on after noticing it had been turned off manually. I remained in the basement for one more minute. I was trying to figure out why this was done before I had a really uneasy feeling, especially considering I didn't even notice the folks when I stepped in. I couldn't see anyone else turning off the water, which meant they were either attempting to get me to come over on purpose or giving them a discount on their stay for the inconvenience. I decided to leave and get into my car, then phone them back just to be safe. I stood up and began walking towards the stairs till I heard the basement door open and several sets of footsteps walking down. Three men stood at the bottom when they arrived. Is it repaired? One of them said it, sounding just like the man I spoke with on the phone. Despite the fact that all of these men were far older than the young man I assumed was sleeping at the house, I assured him that it should be operating now and that the valve had probably merely tightened on its own. I was trying not to point fingers because the whole situation was making me uncomfortable. I really wanted to get out of there and away from these people. They all just stood there staring at me, saying nothing after that. So, let me know if you need anything else, I added as I walked between them, attempting to reach the stairs. They remained motionless, watching me stroll around them. However, when I passed the third guy closest to the stairs, I noticed a gun in the back of his jeans. It freaked me out a little, and I hurried up the steps a little faster, but they didn't follow. They remained in the basement as I dashed out the door and into my car. When I arrived home, I told my wife what had happened. She persuaded me to phone the cops to check on them. It felt justified because they weren't the individuals we thought were staying there and the setting was unusual. We must have waited around 20 minutes before an officer called to say that no one appeared to be home and that he might require me to unlock the door. Instead, I gave him the code and he called back 20 minutes later, reporting there was no trace of anyone remaining present. The next day, we discovered that the man's credit card had been stolen and that they had also stolen various expensive decorations and appliances. I suppose there was never a young couple either. The only thing left unexplained was their entire scheme. Because the water isn't working, I believe they wanted me to not charge them for their stay so that they could use the stolen card for a longer period of time while they planned to rob me at gunpoint. But that begs the question of why they didn't. After guiding me into a trap, three menacing, unnamed males barred my exit in the basement and simply let me go. It makes no sense to me, but after that, I never went to the property while customers were present and a few months later, we stopped using Airbnb and simply rented out the house. If you dare to hear more horrifying stories that will haunt your dreams, make sure to subscribe to Terrifying Tales TV. Sleep tight and remember, you never know what's hiding just around the corner.